So, uh, my name is Antonia Fernandez Figueroa, and I'm going to talk today about the circumgalactic medium in different group environments, as you can see here in the title of my talk. Um, so, we just saw a talk about the circumgalactic medium and how you can study it in a mission, but how can I, how can I change? Okay. <laughs> Um, but usually the circumelectric medium is too diffuse to be studied in a mission. So how can we study it if it's too diffuse to be studied in a mission? So the way that we do it is that we study it through quasar absorption lines. So the way this technique works is that we have a quasar over there and its light is traveling towards us uh, in the Earth where we can observe it. And if we observe the spectra of this quasar, we will see something like this, right? The spectra uh, of quasars uh, is very characteristic. But what will happen if this light in its way towards us met with the circumgalactic medium of a galaxy? What will happen is that the spectra of this quasar, quasar will show this um, absorption line from the circumgalactic medium of this galaxy, right? Um, and so this way we can study the circumgalactic medium, we can study its properties, its kinematics, its metallicity, that sort of stuff. So that's another way that we can study the circumgalactic medium. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, the circumgalactic medium of galaxies that live in group environments. So we know that most galaxies live in group environments, but unfortunately most studies on the circumgalactic medium have only been performed on isolated galaxies. But what do we know about galaxies that live in group environments? Uh, a trend that we see um, usually in studies that have been done in the circumgalactic medium of group environments is the one that I will show here. So in this plot here in the left, we can see equivalent width versus impact parameter. Um, that means distance from the center of a galaxy and the absorption. And the gray dots show isolated galaxies, while the um, purple and red triangles show group galaxies. And we can see that the gray dots decrease um, the farther away you move from the galaxy, while the uh, triangles don't really decrease. They remain constant. The conclusion that we can come up after that is that the circumelectric medium of group galaxies goes to larger distances. And another trend that we see commonly is the fact that um, the circumelectric medium of group galaxies seems to be more kinematic kinematically complex. If we look at the absorption lines in the case of um, galaxies in, in group environments, we see that they are wider. Right? So that means that it is more kinematically complex. And this is the case of groups, but what happens if the galaxies are merging? So that's where my research comes along. So I have two pairs of galaxies that I've studied. First, a non-interacting pair that has two galaxies, one phason galaxy and another etron galaxy. Both of them look symmetric and have a nice morphology, which is an indication that they are not merging, right? But I also have a merging pair. Here is an unrelated object that is a little bit annoying, but you can see the two galaxies here, they are clearly merging, right? And so the, that, the data that I'm using to study this, um, um, actually this system is very uh, um, convenient to study because both of these pairs are in the line of sight of the same quasar that you can see there in the middle of the two pairs. And I have cos spectra of this quasar. And I also have KCWI data of each of the galaxies in the pairs. And another important detail is that both of these galaxies are at different redshifts that you can see here written there. Um, so that means that the absorption lines do not overlap in the spectrum of the quasar. Now, as for the results, I made velocity maps of all of my galaxies. Here is the velocity maps of the non-interacting pair. And we can see that the velocity maps look really nice. So this is an indication that the galaxies are actually non-interacting, right? Um, they look as they should. I also made abundance maps of my galaxies, and we can see here that in the case of the Phason galaxy, uh, there is higher abundance near the center of a galaxy, which is something completely um, expectable from a Phason galaxy. And we also see that in the case of the Echon galaxy, the abundance is slightly higher around the minor axis of the galaxy, which again, it's something that we will expect. 
So both of these are very typical galaxies. And what about the merging system? We would like to know more about the merging system. So here is, again, a velocity map, and we can see that the galaxies are co-rotating, very standard things, right? Um, and I also made an abundance map. And something that I would like to point out is that um, the redder galaxy in the merging system does not have any hydrogen emission lines, which meant that I couldn't calculate the abundance in this case. So that's why we only have the, um, the abundance for the bluer galaxy. The reason we believe that there are no hydrogen um, emission lines in this case is because probably in the earlier stages of the merging, um, the bluer galaxy ate all of the gas from the redder galaxy, and that's why we don't see any hydrogen emission lines. And we can also see that there's slightly higher abundance near the place where the galaxies meet, which again, it's some that, something that we will expect in the case of a merging. Um, now about the CGM, right? We all want to hear about the CGM, that's in the title of the talk, so let's hear about it. Um, so here, again, for reference, I have um, the Faison galaxy, I have the quasar, the impact parameter, which is the projected distance between the center of the galaxy and the place where the um, quasar hits it is 40 kiloparsecs. And here's the velocity map, so we can have like a reference of where, how the things are moving here. And we can see um, here in the spectra, we can see the absorption lines that we observe um, we use void profiles to model this absorption, and we find three velocity components. Um, we also found absorption from neutral hydrogen, carbon-2, silicon-2, um, and silicon-3. Um, and about the properties of this gas, here we have at the top um, metallicity versus velocity, and at the bottom we have um, column density versus velocity of each of the velocity components. And here, um, the blue rectangle represents the um, velocity range of the Faison galaxy, and the um, brown rectangle represents the um, metallicity range of the Faison galaxy. So we can see that one of the clouds, it's actually consistent with an extended rotating disk, and also with the galaxy's metallicity. And also, um, there's another cloud that has higher metallicity, and that could belong to an outflow who, that has been the theme of this session <laughs> during all of this time. About the other galaxy on this pair, the, the Echon galaxy, here again we have for reference um, the galaxy and the quasar, the impact parameter is 55 kiloparsec, and here is the velocity map. Uh, again, we have the velocity and the metallicity ranges, and we see that actually in this case, two of the clouds are consistent with an ex extended rotating disk, and um, the other cloud, the one that's um, over there, uh, that's not consistent with anything, it will be unrelated gas that's in the quasar um, line outside. And we believe that because it has um, a lower um, column density, right? Um, and about the merging system, which is probably a little bit more interesting, um, we can see that the impact parameter in this case is almost 90 kiloparsecs. And when we modeled the absorption, we found six velocity components that we can see over there. We found neutral hydrogen, silicon-3, nitrogen-5, and oxygen-6 absorption. So it's in a higher ionization state, which is already very interesting. And again, we have here um, the metallicities um, and column densities of each of the velocity components that we found. And we find that four of the clouds are consistent with an extended rotating disk in this case. And also three of these clouds have a lower metallicity than the ISM of these galaxies, which is actually something that we will expect because the farther away we go from the center of a galaxy, the um, lower is the metallicity. So. Now, as a summary, we studied the circumgalactic medium of two pairs of galaxies, one that is not interacting and another one that is merging. Um, we found absorption from the circumgalactic medium of both pairs, and the circumgalactic medium of the merging pair seems to be in a higher ionization state. 
Um, also, the circumelactic medium of the merging system has a wider range of metallicities and column densities. And finally, as a conclusion from all of this, we found that the circumelactic medium of the merging pair seems to be more complex. The end. 